Hi, everybody. We're back again for another Sunday service. So glad that so many of you joined and watched uh, last week's, and I hope that you enjoy this week as well. I hope that you're staying well and practicing physical distancing, looking after yourselves. Of course, remember that if you need anything just to chat or you're in the CE room again, and I have a background of the stormy waves. Um, it's a little bit stormy out there at these days, and I know people are feeling unsure. Kind of thought that as the days go by and get better, we could move down the wall a little bit towards the sunny skies. Um, but for now, we are in the same boat together and holding tightly to each other. Thank you so much for people who have um, called one another, donating to the church, those who have emailed um, to say that you're sending in checks or that you're going on par, uh, your donations and and your worship through giving is so much appreciated. As you know, we still have ongoing bills, as you do, and so that um, your giving is very much appreciated. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Carolyn for being here to put all this together and help us with um, the recording. We did something a little bit different this time. Rod was here to play and um, recorded him playing. And also Wendy Ewart was here to sing. So those are on two different recordings. I know Carolyn's going to try to make this all seamless and uh, one kind of show. If it doesn't work, we'll send it out separately and um, you can watch as appropriate and fit those in as you have the time um, to do so. So let's begin with our scripture. The first is from Isaiah 40. All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fail, but the word of God endures forever. You who bring good news, lift up your voice with a shout, and don't be afraid to say to everyone, Here is your God. For the sovereign Lord comes with power and rules with a mighty arm. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. And our second reading is from John chapter 10, where Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself and sacrifices himself if necessary. A hired man is not a real shepherd. The sheep just don't mean anything to him. He sees a wolf coming and he runs from it, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by that wolf. He's only in it for the money. The sheep don't matter to him. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and my sheep know me. I put the sheep before me, even if it means sacrificing myself. Several years ago in Turkey, a flock of sheep made the news. It seems that the shepherd of the flock had been eating breakfast when the sheep began to wander, wander off. Now, now, ordinarily, it wouldn't have been a problem, except the flock was just a stone's throw away from a cliff. And suddenly... One of the sheep went over the cliff, and 1,500 more followed. 400 of the flock fell 45 feet to their deaths. The other 1,100 survived, but only because the dead sheep broke their fall. But many of them were seriously injured, and the cost to the local farmer was estimated at about $120,000. In the scripture we just read in John 10, it says the hired man doesn't own the sheep and cares nothing for the sheep. The flock isn't really his, you see, so he, he isn't as watchful as he should be for those kinds of dangers. And that's what seems to have happened that day in Turkey. The hired shepherd allowed the sheep to get too close to the ravine, and the result was devastating. But by contrast, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd cares enough for his sheep to even die for them because they belong to him. Back in the Old Testament, there was a shepherd, I'm sure you all remember, David, who took on a giant named Goliath. The king, Saul, was skeptical about how this was going to turn out, so he questioned David, do you have it in you to do this? David replied, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when a lion or a bear attacked and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him. I struck him, took the lamb out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I would catch him by his beard and strike him down and kill him. 
Now a hired hand wouldn't be bothered to do that. But these sheep belonged to David's family. They were precious to them. David was even willing to face death to protect them. That's what Jesus is saying here. The sheep are precious to him, and he was willing to die to protect them. I think one of the most touching scriptures in the Bible is found in Matthew 9.36, which says, When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Throughout the Bible, God calls his people sheep. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The question is, why sheep? Max Licata once said, Couldn't God have thought of something better to describe us than sheep? Of all God's animals, the sheep is the least able to take care of itself. Sheep are dumb. <laughs> have you ever known or met a sheep trainer? Have you ever seen sheep do tricks? Have you ever known a sheep who could be taught to roll over? Have you ever witnessed a, a circus sideshow with a feature something like Mazadon and his famous jumping sheep? I never have. No, sheep are just not that smart. They're defenseless. They have no fangs, no claws. They can't bite you. They can't outrun you. Last year, I had a conversation with a young person who came to me and said he wanted to get baptized. So I, I did my thing and asked him some standard questions. I asked him if he believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, and he replied, yes. I then asked if he realized that he, like the rest of us, needed God in his life. He needed forgiveness for failures and sin and mistakes. And again, he said yes. And then I explained that this decision of baptism indicated that he was willing to let God be the one in charge. Jesus would own him, everything he was, everything he had. I asked if he was willing to make that commitment, and he paused. No, he said, I'm not ready to do that. I had to admire his honesty and his courage. You see, he didn't mind having a nodding acquaintance with Christ, but he did mind the idea that God would own him. He thought that if he let Jesus lead him, guide his life, be his shepherd, somehow he would be a mindless sheep without any will of his own, a wimp. But, you know, one of the greatest kings and military leaders in the Old Testament, David, wrote these familiar words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid. For you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of everyone. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will be with me all the days of my life and I will dwell in God's house forever. God describes us as sheep because we function best when God leads us. Left to ourselves, we tend to be proud, manipulative, even selfish. There's a lot of drama in our lives. I mean, all you have to do is to see how some folks have behaved during this virus crisis. To go to the grocery store and see the shelves emptied of bread and milk and meat and, and for goodness sakes, toilet paper. I don't get that one. But it doesn't even seem to bother these folks that others don't have these things. We become selfish. But when you get right to the core of things, all of us struggle with that, with looking after ourselves, putting ourselves as number one. We all struggle with feelings of pride and selfishness and indulge in manipulating others on occasion. And that's why we need Jesus to be our shepherd, to lead us so that we can change and become true people of God. Jesus said the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep.
You see, Jesus had all of the power of the universe at his disposal, and yet he was willing to die for you and me. And if we follow him, if we allow him to be our shepherd, then he teaches us the proper way to think and act the way that he thinks and acts. In Matthew 28, Jesus said, Whoever would be greatest among you must be a servant. Whoever would be first among you must be a slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life for many. You see, when we follow Jesus the way that we should, then we become a servant to others. We don't expect to be served. We become like Christ. But we will never be what God designed us to be unless Christ is the shepherd. But why should Jesus do that? Why should he want to be our shepherd? Well, because he cares for us. We matter. We are precious to him. In Matthew 11, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls in me. It almost echoes the words from Psalm 23, which says, The Lord is my shepherd and restores my soul. Now, I think this is particularly important to us right now. We are all under a kind of quarantine, some kind of self-restriction and distancing. Folks are cut off from their family and friends. For many, the threat to their jobs and the loss of income makes them afraid. And we're threatened by a virus we don't understand. Thousands have been infected, and many have died. Those are very real issues for a lot of us, a lot of people. For some, it feels like we are walking through the valley, some for the shadow of death. But as children of God, we have knowledge of a promise that we can hold on to because God said that we will never be left alone. We will never be forsaken. In the midst of danger, God will always be here. Yes, there is a remote chance that you or I or someone we love will get sick, perhaps even die from this illness. As someone once said, nobody gets out of this life alive. But as Christians, we have a promise from Jesus that death doesn't have power over us. When we die in this world, we move on to a more beautiful and exciting world than this one could ever be. And that's why the words of Psalm 23 are so powerful. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, shadow of illness, shadow of death, I will not be afraid, for you are with me. I don't know who wrote this, but I like it. It's a, a writing that says, The true shepherd always travels ahead of his sheep. He's down in front. Any attack upon the sheep has to take him into account. That's the way we need to view Jesus as our good shepherd, always in front. He's always in our tomorrows. Whatever struggles we face tomorrow, Jesus is already there. And on top of that, Jesus calls us then to be there for others. At times like these, we should be looking for ways of showing Jesus to others. Jesus said, let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and then glorify God who is in heaven. In these times of struggle, you can make a difference. Writing letters to folks in nursing homes, calling on your neighbors, your friends, the members of your church, encouraging them, praying for them. Ask if there's anything they need. Ask if there's anything you should be praying for. You know, several times in his ministry, Jesus talked about sheep and shepherds. And one day the Pharisees mocked Jesus for spending time with those sinners. Jesus told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep, if he's lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one who's lost until he finds it? And when he finds it, he lays it on his shoulders and comes home rejoicing and calling together his friends and neighbors says to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. That shepherd left the 99 safe sheep to find the one who had been lost. 
And once again, here Jesus refers to himself as that shepherd. He's going to leave the 99 and find the one who's lost. Me. And you. Jesus, the good shepherd, laid down his life for you. So the question for you to ponder this week is, how will you respond to that kind of love? Listen to Wendy Ewart as she sings the 23rd Psalm for us. And let's pray together. Good Shepherd, within your embrace we are safe and secure. We grow and are nurtured together as one flock, the people of your pasture under your loving care and protection. In you we find comfort and healing. So we praise you and we thank you for your presence. But today we pray for others. We pray for those who are weak or struggling with physical or mental or spiritual health. Take away the fear, the anxiety, the feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. Lord, we lift to you our concern for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill by this virus. Elderly people, those with chronic health problems. Protect them from harm and be their comfort in this time of uncertainty and in their isolation from loved ones. God, our healthcare workers and first responders are working longer with more risk of contracting the new virus themselves. Renew their energy, sustain them, protect them as they work with patients. Inspire and invigorate the research doctors developing better tests to diagnose this disease, to create vaccines to prevent it. Be with people making decisions that would affect the lives and futures of our families and communities and countries. We pray that they would communicate clearly, truthfully, calmly with each other and with the public, that their message would be received and heeded. May truth and compassion be the standard of people setting policies for our protection. As families adjust to everyone being at home, businesses and schools close, we ask that you guide people in this new reality. Give families grace for one another. 
prompt worn out parents to speak words of kindness and encouragement to their children. Help children find creative ways to experience the beauty of all that you've created and continue learning. We thank you for your faithfulness and how you've guided and provided for us in the past. It can be scary and overwhelming not knowing how bills and obligations will be met or not to be able to provide for a family. As people feel financial strain during uncertainty, bring them peace, reminding them that you are there. I pray that you would provide for them in their times of need and use each of us to help if we can. Lord, we are grateful for all the people who continue to work each day so that people are able to eat. Give them grace to handle disgruntled customers during supply shortage. Keep their bodies healthy as they unload and stock boxes of supplies as they deliver needed supplies and food to people who have ordered it. Keep them safe. Even in this stressful, uncertain time, Remind us of your care and constant presence in our lives and make us thankful. Thankful that we're part of this faith family. Thankful for neighbors who reach out. Thankful for sunny days. Thankful for secure homes. Thankful that we have a hope and a joy that is beyond what we are experiencing now. For we are your children, the sheep of your pasture, and you, our good and gracious shepherd, will lead us always. Amen. I'm really thankful that Rod shares his wonderful talent with us at all times. I know you'll enjoy this piece he's about Hi, to play. We're doing our social distancing here and trying to put together a program for you. Here's a medley or a mashup of On Eagle's Wings with My Faith Looks Up to Thee. And as we close our service, may the Lord of peace, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip us with all that we need to do God's will. And may God produce in us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, every good thing 
that is honoring to the Lord and uplifting to each other. Stay home, stay well, until we are together again. God bless you all. Amen.